Given the incredible variety of what is out there, trying to narrow down your pick for a first watch is a daunting task at times. But if I had to pick one style or category that I think is the best option for the vast majority of cases, at least for 2022, my pick would have to be the dive watch. So in this video, I'll talk about five reasons I see the dive watch as the perfect place to start your watch collecting journey or a place to start and end if you're so compelled. But before we jump into looking at these five reasons, I do wanna mention if you would love things all dive watches, check out our list looking at 50 of the best dive watches on the market, spanning a wide variety of price ranges. It's a great jumping off point for your research. Couldn't include all of them, but a good portion of the dive watches in the industry that I think are good to look at are on that list. Check it out, link in the description down below. For our first point, we're going to talk about the over-engineering that goes into a dive watch compared to other design styles. Perhaps the number one thing going for dive watches is going to be the amount of thought involved with creating a watch capable of withstanding the challenges of undersea life. Starting with the most obvious challenge, the pressure placed on a watch by weight of the surrounding water, it's no joke, and increases quickly as a diver descends. At 30 feet of seawater, a watch is subject to around 13 pounds, about the weight of an average house cat for every square inch. That might seem like no big deal, but at 100 feet, the recreational limit for many scuba divers, you're already talking about around 45 pounds for every square inch of a watch, equivalent to having a full-size exercise plate on every exposed inch. And at the 300 meter mark to which many real dive watches are rated, you're looking at around 430 something PSI, which is around two full-size refrigerators on every inch of your watch, meaning even the least expensive or most basic real dive watch is being built extremely tough. In addition, the diving itself, boats, and undersea world are anything but gentle on a watch, which when combined with the engineering necessary to achieve any kind of water resistance, adds up to an exceptionally hardy watch design format. With this intended purpose of utility, it's going to be so beyond what is required for a typical individual and what their needs would be. So for simple peace of mind, the dive watch is one of the all time best options in terms of starting your collecting journey without having to worry about the possibility of damage. For our second point, we're going to take a look at the versatility offered by the dive watch. In a lot of ways, the world we're living in today is the most casual it's ever been, at least in terms of personal style and clothing and accessories that people will wear on their wrists, especially in work environments. The pandemic certainly had something to do with that, but the result is that what would traditionally be called more casual styles of watches, like dive watches, for example, now don't stand out the way they perhaps would in different eras, say like in the rise of the Mad Men era. And while there certainly are occupations where a suit and tie will be required, standards have become relatively more lax across the board, making the dive watch even more enticing. But let's address a couple points here though first. Not all dive watches are created equal. Wearing something like a colorful Doxa Sub 300 Professional or a tool-oriented Marathon GSAR with a suit are probably not the best ideas in my opinion, but this is just going to be a segment of dive watches. Say something like Longines with their Legend Diver, the Omega Seamaster 300, or the Rolex Submariner. All of these in my mind would not look out of place with a suit based on modern standards. Some might disagree with me on that point, but I think relatively speaking, I think they will look the part. On the flip side, I've seen many people who build a wardrobe around what to wear to work and then forget what their style is outside of work. And as much as I love dress watches and I think it is easier to dress down something more formal than the inverse, I think a refined dive watch like those mentioned can do a better job at achieving the look while not being more delicate in the process like dress watches, for example. For my third point, and bear with me here, I wanted to stress the history, cultural importance, and significance of dive watches in terms of their affiliations. The dive watch that we know today was developed in the early 1950s alongside scuba diving, both as a sport and a military pursuit. With that in mind, from the beginning, cool people doing interesting and extreme things or dive watches, an element that helped lead to their cultural relevance and impressive affiliations. 
Whether it was Lloyd Bridges wearing a Rolex Submariner on his famous scuba diving television show, Sea Hunt, the many undersea voyages of Jacques Cousteau and his crew wearing Rolex, Omega, and Doxa dive watches, or perhaps most prominently James Bond's cinematic use of the Rolex Submariner and later the Omega Seamaster Diver 300. This helped to push the dive watch as the de facto standard for people with a rugged, adventurous, and interesting lifestyle. And more than just their inclusion in popular media, dive watches were actually being used as tools on the wrists of a variety of impactful people actively engaged in the process of making history. From the beginning, maritime military commandos representing units like the US Navy SEALs opted for the Rolex or Tudor Submariner, as did British Royal Navy clearance divers with the famous Rolex Mill Sub, and with the French military famously first opting for the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, and later the desirable Snowflake Tudor Submariners of the 1970s. These use cases are in large part what has led to the incredible collectability and value now present in vintage military dive watches. Combining the allure of the watches themselves with the emotional resonance left behind with the experiences these watches both witnessed. Moving on from a more romantic idea surrounding the history and lore of dive watches, our next point has to do with some of the practical features originally designed for diving that also integrate well into everyday watch wear, starting with the rotating bezel. Initially intended for timing dives, the unidirectional elapsed time bezel is a defining feature of a dive watch and also a useful tool for everyday life, as at the end of the day, it's simply an easy to use method for measuring time. You align the zero marker on the bezel with the minute hand and then read the elapsed time from the bezel markings. For me, this method is actually easier and more legible than many chronographs on the market. And it's also simpler to execute and available in much less expensive watches compared to those with chronograph functionality from a mechanical perspective. Another point here is legibility. In order for a dive watch to serve as a useful tool in diving scenarios, the dial has to be instantaneously legible in a variety of underwater environments from clear to extremely murky visibility conditions, meaning dive watches are almost always easy to read, a trait further enhanced in most cases by the presence of impactful luminescent material. Loom whether in the case of printed material like tritium in years prior, tritium gas vials that you'll see with the likes of Marathon or Ball watches, or Superluminova in most cases today, Loom is essentially a glowing material that allows a watch to be easily read in reduced lighting conditions, whether below or more often above the water surface. And I think this point of not having to interact with your phone and being able to see in both light and dark the time at a quick glance is you know, maybe not the number one selling proposition for day-to-day -day versatility and practicality, but I think it does help when you're talking about an antiquated object at the end of the day that is a mechanical watch. And moving on to our final point, we have maybe the definitive reason for a dive watch, value for money. In many areas of watchmaking, refinement, elevated finishing practices, and technically impressive movements are the very essence of what brings people into the hobby while also being some of the primary aspects that make watch enthusiasm an inherently expensive pursuit. For every style of watch, there is an affordable option, However, given dive watches nature of being functional and focused with their design and finish, I think affordable dive watches typically deliver much more than competing styles of watches, such as chronographs, which are limited severely by the expensive movements needed, or dress watches that really lean on that area of refinement. Of course, this is not always the case and there are exceptions, but generally speaking, I recall more instances being wowed by an affordable dive watch than I am by an affordable dress watch or chronograph. And although I think there are some everyday style watches or field watches especially that have similar positioning of value, dive watches usually always come with those added benefits of being built to withstand the toughest of environments. I mean, just think about the number of icons of affordability, such as the Casio Duro, the Vostok Amphibia, Seiko SKX, Citizen Pro Masters. And this is just scratching the surface. We're not even talking about Orient divers, the many micro brands out there, and even some Swiss brands that I find for value for dollar are stacked up very well compared to their dress counterparts. And this is also mirrored on the high end as most luxury dive watches cap out around 10 to $15,000 with Rolex, Blanc Pond, and GEO. For every other category of watch, maybe minus the field watch, this is a rare thing to see and is an indication of what a dive watch represents to an owner, a robust, no-nonsense watch that still offers solid function in a category of mechanical watches that in many ways is antiquated. 
But all right, guys, that is my take and giving reasons behind why I think the dive watch, if you just want to oversimplify this idea of watches to the most bare bones degree, I think the dive watch just makes the most sense for the majority of people out there in 2022 as a place to start and perhaps end if you are so compelled to only have one watch in your collection or only one style of watch in your collection. I know for some, that's probably a stretch, uh, but this is my take. Do you guys agree with my take? Do you disagree? I'd love to see comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. Also check out that dive watch blog on our website, teddybaldasar.com. Definitely subscribe to our newsletter where you can get other additional written content to your inbox every single week. Uh, that is completely different content from the content that we're creating here on this channel. So a great way to get even more content sent to you on a weekly basis. Also be sure to check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. Also, we have a new pre-owned section on our site, definitely worth checking out. Have some great luxury watches available for sale from the likes of brands like Breitling, Tudor, Grand Seiko, and many others. And we also have a section where you can sell your watch. So if you're looking to move on from a watch your collection, fill out the form on the sell page, and one of our team members will be in touch with you if it's a good fit for our program. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.